Uh, the talk is called Multigo Tungsten as a Collaborative Attack Platform. We've got, we've got tons of demos that we're doing. So um, we're hoping that it's going to work well. Uh, we had a situation here where we're running at 1024 by 768, which is like so 90s kind of thing. Um, and we can't, without rebooting the system, get it up to a good res. So hopefully that will mean you can see everything we do. But we might have to kind of resize a little bit and so forth and so on. Okay, so um, about us, this uh, is us. You can kind of pick which one is which. Um, one of us is crazy and one does a lot of work, apparently. <laughs> uh, so depending on which one of us you like, it's the one that you'll, you'll pick. Yeah, so my name is Rulof Temming. This is Andrew McPherson. And um, I know, I see a lot of the faces that was at the training. Uh, we did some training this last two sessions, like, seems like about a 40-day session that we did. Um, so I see a couple of the people from the training that pitch up here as well. That's kind of nice. Okay. Like I said, we've got a lot of stuff. This is the schedule that we're going to go through. Um, I'm going to start off by explaining you why we did what we did. We're then going to look at Multigo Tungsten, which I believe it's went live. On stage. <laughs> went live from stage about two minutes ago. Uh, so that stuff is live. But we're going to look at that. Um, then we're going to look at something that I call Multigo Teeth, which is uh, just kind of giving teeth to Multigo. We'll look at the standard stuff. And actually, I suspect we're just going to skip the standard stuff and go straight away to the more interesting stuff. Um, then Andrew is going to take over. He's going to show you Kingfisher, which is uh, something pretty cool that he's going to explain to you. And then if we have time at the end, we're going to look at how we're going to be herding compromised devices, which might be machines or it might be mobile devices. All right, so why did we do what we did? Uh, and you'll see what we did, because that's what we're talking about. The, uh, we, we, we kind of see Multigo as a kind of an airframe, as a kind of a platform for, for uh, a whole lot of different things that you can attach to it. And in order to make... Um, to, in order to make it believable that this is a, a nice collaborative attack platform, we created a couple of tools that we hooked onto this to show you, right? And the plan of this is really to say, um, what are you looking? Are you? Are we off the screen? We're cutting on the sides. Are we off the screen? Yeah, no, we're just cutting on the sides. Do you want oh, me to plug it back in while you talk? I'll plug it. You talk. This is this is a great start. Um, oh. Now I can't see what it says. Okay. Um, do you want me to change it? Yeah, change it. Um, so, so basically, the plan for us is to provide a platform that, as a start, can visualize information, that can collect information, and that can also give us a point where we can actually run transforms and pieces of code on entities on the graph to do some things for us, right? So can I just see a show of hands who here has never used Multigo before? Okay, there's a couple of you, but most of you have seen it before and knows what it's like. Okay, let's see if we can plug this back in. <laughs> so now we have nothing. We, we started off with, you know, full HD is really good. Then we went to 1024, then it moved to the side, and now it's off the screen completely. Yeah, we're back to off the screen, but it's better than nothing. Okay, so you're going to have to run with this. So, okay, so this is not really, the, in, in, terms of the, in terms of the kind of attack tools, this is not really what we do. It's not our day job. Our day job is to build Multigo and make it better. But we've got a bit of a, you know, security background and um, it helped us to develop some of these tools. But these are tools that really you should be developing, right? Now, in, in Tungsten, we have two main big features that are new to Tungsten. Um, and this is uh, collaboration, which allow real-time collaboration between graphs and people. And the second is, and finally we have it, we can announce it, we have undo and we have redo. And I know it kind of sounds silly, but it's a major big deal, right? Okay. So the collaboration really works. Um, the, the, the communication between, the, the communication design for collaboration, we wanted to use XMPP for that. Um, that's a standard protocol. Everybody knows how it works. It's pretty robust. Um, and we wanted to also have be in a situation where we could use public infrastructure. 
So not necessarily that it goes through our servers, but it could go through jabber.de, it can run through gchat, any of those servers. Um, and of course, um, it will also su uh, support HTTP tunneling, which means you can use Tor. It doesn't do it now, but it will be able to do it really soon. Okay, then what we also wanted to say that this, that nobody can read this information that we're kind of sharing between the graphs. So everything is heavily encrypted, symmetrical key, um, and it means that there's no certificates or things like that in place. It's ju really just a symmetrical key that you've got to share between everybody that collaborates with you. Um, and our aliases are separated from our actual XMPP credentials which means you could be anyone, you could use any alias, it's not connected to your credentials at all, and this allows for really nice kind of like uh, uh, non-attribution. You'll see it's kind of cool. Okay, what do we do within Tungsten? We, can, we sync the entire graph, right? We sync notes, we sync bookmarks, um, we do not sync attachments yet because that's kind of difficult to do. We, we sync the layout, but we don't sync the viewport, so that means you can still navigate the graph on your end, um, but the other person can force the layout and say, I want to have this kind of layout. Now, if all of this is kind of you going, I don't know what this guy's talking about. Like, I've never used this thing, and he's talking about viewports and layouts. You'll see it soon, right? Um, and also what we have is a little chat program that you can chat with the other analysts in real time. Uh, and you can run transforms, so you can run transforms while all the other people are actually in the graph collaborating together. So it's not just a viewer, um, you can also collaborate together. The poor cameraman, I, you, I'll try to stand still, sir. Yeah, <laughs> so do this. Okay, right, so to join an investigation, you need to know the investigation name, you need to know the key, and you need to know the server. So this all seems kind of foreign, so what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to do a demo live on stage, which is never a good idea. Um, we've got a machine over there, we've got a machine over there. Of course, these machines are both on the net. They could be anywhere in the world. And we're going to collaborate together in a graph. Right, so let's try this. Now, you're going to have to see. Demo one of a million. Yeah, you're going to have to see. Okay, so I'm going to join here. I'm going to click on this little button over here. And I'm going to say, I'm going to join a session with the name of BH2013. Security key, that's, your, that's actually your key that's going to use, be used for the crypto, right? So everybody has to have the same key. And my alias is going to be RT. And I'm going to connect. And I'm going to join. And I'm in there. And I'm now I'm waiting for Andrew to join. So you can see, here's okay. me. I'm joining the server. OK. Andrew is joining, and there's Andrew, and I can say in this four pixel window that I have over here now, I can say, hello, Andrew. Hello, Andrew. And Andrew says, nothing. Andrew says, oi. Okay. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Okay, whatever. Right, so now, um, I'm going to start off with the domain. I'm just going to drag a domain in here. Let's pick something that is interesting to us, which is dhs.gov. No. And then I'm going to say, Andrew, you on the other side, so no hands, right? I'm going to say, Andrew, run the DNS to the domain to DNS set of transforms on this for us. Just going to execute on that side. And it's going to come through here. Maybe you can hear it. You look kind of weird when you're leaning over your laptop that close. I'm leaning over my laptop that close. Okay, and there's a lot of entities coming out. And I can at this stage say, let me zoom out a bit, see what's here. Hmm, this looks interesting. You know, what is this bar to, right? <laughs> and I can say, okay, on my side, I'm going to run a transform and I'm going to say, let's resolve that to IP addresses. If I can find it here, because now. Where is it that thing? Two IP address. Right, so this is going to happen on my side and it's going to happen on his side as well. Can you guys see? So it's actually cool because you don't need to see the entities, you're just seeing the graph now. Right, um, then what I'm going to ask Andrew at this stage to do is Andrew, can you take those IP addresses for me to NetBlocks? Okay. So again, no hands and just who, use the who's. Uh, method. All right, so he runs that. 
and we can basically collaborate together in this graph. And there could be a lot of different people collaborating together in this graph, um, and we think that's, that's pretty cool, right? So there's that. Okay, can you put that in um, uh, organic layout? Because I like that the best. And you would see there the layout changed to organic on my side, right? So we're going to come back to this a little bit. Um, the one thing that is also pretty cool, I'm just going to switch to block layout over here. Um, let's just see, can we find, uh, there's a couple of machines that's in the block that's 216.81. I'm going to mark it. Okay, can you mark that block for me? Um, so if I have to, we, what we found is if we on the telephone or something, I say, well, I'm looking at this node, it's over here. It's on the left-hand side of your graph, it's at the top, then that doesn't work so well, right? So um, he can mark an entity for me, I could be anywhere, and he could mark an entity, and in this four pixel chat window, you'll see that there's a little link that's now been sent to us, and if we, I click on this, it will actually highlight the node for me. So if he says, this is the node, or these are the nodes, then he simply drags a box around it. I can do the same, and I can say, actually, we're interested in these machines over there. And I can say, okay, mark it to Andrew. Six entities, now you can't see it, but if he clicks on it, he'll see those six entities, right? Okay, so Andrew, can you take this block that I'm gonna mark for you, uh, take all the parents and just delete the rest? Okay. And then we're gonna get back to this thing. Actually, someone put a note up there as well for it. Yeah, so there, that disappears, and you'll see that if I zoom in there, he's gonna type a note for me on, the gra on that graph, and that's gonna say, this is the one, right? So this gives us the ability to nicely collaborate together, put notes on things, mark it, say this is here, this is there. We can, a whole lot of people can work together in the same kind of investigation. Now we're going to come back to this because this is going to become a little bit more interesting in a bit. Right, let's switch to the presentation. Right, now, um, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to Multigo Teeth. So this is tungsten. So teeth runs on top of tungsten, right? We're going to have that together in one little package. Right, and really what we wanted to do here was say, we wanted to build an attack platform with the following things in mind, right? Um, a lot of guys can work together, large network, no ODA, external over the internet, and it's completely black box. So you can't have ODA, big network, think multinational kind of thing. Think like, you know, yeah, big. Right, and we want to make this T thing, we'll make it free. It will run on Kali Linux, right, because all of our tools are already in Kali Linux. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. Every, all the pen testers are using Kali Linux anyhow. It's pretty like cool, them. hey? And we like them. And we like them as well. They're nice guys. Um, and we want to build it all with local transforms so that we can get real-time logging, status reports, kind of interaction with the user, and that's kind of cool. Um, and I really wanted to make it easy to read so the source is open and it's kind of like very easy to read code. It's also a really bad code probably because I wrote it, right? So you cannot giggle if you look at the code and go, Pfft. He did it like this, noob, right? It's all in Python, so we like it like that. It reads easily, um, and you're happy to, you're welcome to change it and add to it and do whatever you want with it. It's free. Uh, Doogie asked me about the licensing, and I was like, I don't know. Li I don't know, licensing, I don't know. That sounds like paperwork, right? So we know that Multigo rocks at footprinting. Um, and what can we get from a footprint? If you're external, you're in a multinational and you kind of like, you know, looking from the outside black box perspective, you're probably gonna hit web servers. Lots of web servers. You might get some SMTP servers. Um, you know, maybe if you're lucky, FTP, VPN, that kind of thing. Uh, 3389, maybe 24, so, so. so what does Teeth do? Teeth is basically do the following things. Like this is the kind of condensed slide of a lot of things. And it says it mines for directories and it mines it in known and unknown locations so we can take something like sitemap.xml, feed it in there, get it, build out the structure of the website and search within all of those directories for other directories and mine it for files like backup.sql and backup.zip and, and all of those kind of, like I said, be working on the boring stuff first, right? 
Okay, it can also find and brute force CMS, so Joomla, cPanel, blah, blah, what's the other one? WordPress, so on and so on. Identify it, say point to it, this is the user, here's the password list, let's rock and roll, and there it goes. Um, the one I like, pretty much like the last one, is we basically scan this, we crawl the site. Once we've crawled the site, we identify the forms, we see the forms. There's a little bit of config file that tells you when to take a form and when not to take a form. We look at gets, we look at post of forms, and we say, there's a couple of forms on here. What we really want to do is we want to run SQL map on all of these forms, right? Mm. And that works pretty cool. It's shotgun approach, but it's kind of nice. Um, and we also want to look at something like OWA. So identify the different OWA servers, 2010, 2007, 2003, Intel, M-based, form-based, all of that. So this is an OWA server. Let's mine for email addresses around this domain. Let's have a couple of passwords, put that in, and brute force OWA, and it's done. It's kind of like click, click, and it's, you know, why should we struggle with? At the back, we're using things like Hydra and that, but, you know, why should I have to have a command line for that thing? I just want to point and click, like in the movies, right? So we can do that now. Right, I want to show you a video, which I'm not going to show you, because I want to show you some of the stuff live. Um, and for that, I'm going to be in this VM, uh, which who knows what that's going to display like. That's probably <coughs> pretty um, okay. fix the display now. Uh, it's okay. Actually, we're just cutting off the, the side. We'll just switch to two and plug it in, if you want. Okay, let's time. try it. Okay. Let's try to last, fix the display. Last time to fix the display. Last time to fix the display. It's not like we, you know, we have lots of time in this talk. It's not like we have, you know, 60,000 slides and 500 demos. Mm, two. It's on two. And I'm guessing it's not working. What? It's not uh, not our day today with this projector. Whoa, whoa! There's stuff. Where is it, please? Zing, zing, zing. Uh, okay, we're okay. going to switch back to the other cable. We're going to stick with not having the what right hand, left hand side of the screen. That's that's okay. We'll make it work. Okay. So I'm just going to put this over here. Right. Okay. So it's okay because you still see the graph window, so that's pretty cool. Okay. So now let's see. I was kind of, you know, building up to this, but now let's see. Where are we? So let's do some of these things live. I'm going to drag a website in here. Um, I'm going to rename it. Oops, I'm going to double click on it and I say www.andrewmohawk.com and I'm going to say, okay, find me, find me possible injection points on this thing. So I'm going to run this little transform that says find pup, which is a possible injection point, and it will tell me it's there. And here you see 10 pixels that are explaining to you that it's a so username and a password field that we're going to be checking. There's the post and so forth and so on. Uh, and I can right click on this and I can say, okay, attack it. And this will actually, if I tab to this thing, will fire up a SQL map. There it says, running SQL map, like so, right? Blah, 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 blah. Here's all the parameters. All of that is configurable. All of that is in a file. You can set it. You can say, I want this, I want that, I don't want this. And if we get it, it says that particular form is injected. And if I click here, I actually see the SQL map output, right? Yeah. So this is pretty cool. I can run that thing across, you know, a big space. Just to give you an idea what a big space looks like, it's not that big, but, you know, you get the idea. Here is, um, where do we go? Open CNN. This is so, this is CNN.com and a couple of their websites. And if I right click on here, and I say find perps, then there's, you know, more forms. Oh, we haven't tested this because that would be unethical, right? 
No, no, yeah. I'm not trying this. <laughs> I've been around too much for that. Right, one of the other things I can quickly show you is um, if, we, if we do the OWA thing. So I've got a list here of the top thousand, what is it, four Fortune uh, thousand? Fortune 1000 companies. Yeah, companies. So these are, these are their domain names, right? And I'm literally going to pick a random part over here. Let's take that part over there. You can see that. I'm going to copy that into a new graph. And I relay out that. Which I'm going to say, OK, on these, find me the, the webmail interfaces. So it does a whole lot of interesting things here at the back while this is running. Live on so, stage. So are we doing this live? This Run is live, as live as you get. Um, and it might come back and it say, OK, well, on this, the, this thing, that is a Cisco VPN, web VPN. Uh, this is a. Oh, well, office interface. I'm looking for a 2010. That's a Junos Pulse Secure something. No, another one like that. Okay, Wendy's. Wendy's. They make food, right? I think they have some sort of fast food chain. Uh, I think they make food. Okay, so let's look at these guys. So I'm going to invert my... How do I do it? You see, this is why I don't want to work in this res because I can't see nothing. Delete. So I can say, okay, on Wendy's, Let's find email addresses on Wendy's. Luckily, I know where it is. And let's see what we get back. Um, now, this is going live. Well, there's not a lot. Aww. OK, there's a couple of email addresses there. It's a pity on some of the others, we normally get like 255 of those email addresses. Then I can say, OK, take these email addresses, you know, write it to a file. OK, and then I can right click on this and I can say, OK, attack wendys.com, which I'm not going to do because it will, it will brute force those email addresses against that OWA server, uh. right? Again, passwords and all of that is in a file. You can set it up and so forth and so on. Just press OK. No, I'm not pressing OK. See what, happen what happens when you press OK? I no, I'm not. You've got that kill switch so that you No, can... I'm not. OK. No. <laughs> no, come no, no, on. No. We're not going to do that. <laughs> That's not right. Come okay. Um, the other thing I want to tell you is uh, I think I need to switch to the slides for this. Um, where are we? Oh, my word. You see, this is like I hate VMs. Okay. Uh, pip, we did that. Oh, well, we did that. Okay. So we looked at vulnerability scanners and it kind of felt like this. Remember, I only did this stuff six years ago. So I looked at vulnerability scanners again and there's really like these monster things that were slow and tedious and bit you in the ass, right? Um, and at the end, we decided we're going to go with NMAP with um, NSE. Um, where's, where's Charlie? Thank Charlie. It was his idea. He said all of these people told him, and I was like, that must be a good idea. So it's free, fast, light, reliable, kind of reliable. It's, um, it's really the way to go. There's 400 of these little NSE scripts within Kali. Works really well. Um, so I'm not going to go into exactly how it sits together, but the important thing to know is you can configure all of that. And if you change that thing from, for instance, default, the family name, to intrusive, then everything is really cool because then it will do things like it would you know, look for passwords, it will look if it can connect to your SQL databases. So it becomes really a powerful thing. So, OK, I'm going to show you quickly what that looks like here. Um, so we have a company in South Africa called uh, internet solutions. Of course, we call them internet pollutions. Um, right, and um, I've got a small little, small little piece of their network over here. So that's hosting at zero zero. This resolves to all of that IP addresses and so forth and so on. So now what I can do is I can select these IP addresses. I can right click. I can say okay, run nmap on it, and it comes back and it says okay. This is terminal service, 3389, there's this, and so forth, and so on. It's pretty standard. And then what I can do is I can select all of this, and I can say, take it to a port. OK. Right, and then I can say bubble view. And then I can see what the ports are that's prevalent in this network. Um, and obviously this one. It's the only one, because it had only one machine that had 3389 open. 
that, that's pretty cool, right? I can also do this for banners and in large network, then I can say, okay, all your Apache machines, they live on these boxes on these ports, right? So this, this works pretty well. Right, and then, now we've done this, this is the point that says point, click, bang. Um, okay, but, the, the thing that's really cool, and here's the bit, we never advertised this because we really kind of worked till it, we worked on this thing till almost kind of a day ago. I don't know, Dom, mm -hmm. when did you ask to write this stuff? It was hectic. So, Internet Census Project, who's heard of it? Okay, the rest of you should go read it. It is the coolest thing ever. If the guy that did this work ever wants a beer, come speak to me, I'll buy you lots, right? He's unidentified, we call him Vim, because at the end he says, we is me. Um, scan the internet, scan the entire internet, put it out with a little, uh, he basically compromised a couple of home routers, recompiled Nmap for that home router, scanned the entire internet, pretty much rock star stuff, mm -hmm. right? Um, I read about it on the MWR blog, and I said, listen, guys, I wanna play, get this data. Nils, I don't know if he's here, he got the stuff for me and he sourced it all the way up to people that I'm getting to. So it's big, it's really, really big. There's 175 billion with a B service probes that are raw service probes that are loaded in there. Um, it's 585 gigabytes. If you uncompress it, it's nine teras. And the guy said, I'm really excited about this until I found out if I wanna unzip, it's gonna take me 350 days, right? <laughs> So we can't work with that, but there are people that can work with that, right? So we went, to, we went to Amazon and we said, listen, you guys, we didn't go to Amazon, we considered Amazon and said that must be the right place to do this stuff, right? And that was really great until we worked out how much it's gonna cost us to do all of this work and then we're like, well, we're not gonna pay that, right? And then I spoke to some people there and George, and Dominique said, you know what, screw it, we'll give it to you at a discounted rate and we'll throw in a Dominic to do the heavy lifting and the crunching. He thought it was gonna be two or three days it had, and it ended up to be two or three weeks, right? Yeah. Okay, so what can we do with this data? Right now, we still basically, I think there's still things crunching, importing and so forth and so on. By the way, Dominic's sitting right here in front. He's gonna come with us to the Q&A. If you have questions about this, you can ask him. He's a rock star on this stuff. Um, I owe him lots of beers as well. I'm gonna be freaking broke by the end of Black Hat, right? So what can we do with this? What we can do is we can basically take a block, take the block, say, listen, on this block, what IP addresses do you have in this block that are open? And on what ports are they open? And I'm talking about a class A. I can go a class A, say, what IPs are open in this block and what ports are open on them? We can't do the banners yet. We'll do the banners and freaking rule the world someday. So I'm gonna go back to, not my VM, but I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna go back to this one. Remember the DHS thing that we did at the beginning? Still in collaborative mode. I'm basically now gonna say, on this network here, which is how many, this is like a couple of class C's, right? 16 class C's, right? I'm gonna say, show me, um, mm -hmm. um, Turn the server on. Hey? Turn the service off. Is the service set off? RTC. It's not this one. What well, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it here, sorry. I'm gonna do it here. Okay, so let me, let me show you. What I can do is I can join that graph now from my VM. Sorry, I was supposed to do that. Okay, so now there's three people in that graph, right? So I'm joining from my VM into the same thing. There it is, ba da da da. Okay, so now it's me. So he just joined our investigation and got wherever we were. So if he was a third Where, party, he... Yeah, wherever we left yeah. off, the, there we are. Okay, so here, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run this transform. Now what this transform says is, find me all machines that are, uh, well, that are not only open on 80.25 and 4.4.3, right? And it goes, these are the machines. So there's in the DHS net blocks. For the and then, that late. what I can do is I can say, on all of these, find me, you can't see it, but go to port, right? Now oh, it's busy doing this. You can hear. Well, I'll take this off and put it here. Okay. And of 
course, because we're in collaboration mode, we can see this on the other side as well. So, and, on my screen. and on his machine. So if we back here, uh, let me just switch. This is the other one. It's busy with it. And there it's done. And I can say, okay, lay it out and uh, lay it out again. And lay it out like that. That's nasty. Let's do it. Uh, uh, ah, there we go. So, what are those ports? Okay, 53, boring. 80, boring. 403, boring. Wait, 993, not so boring. 995, 10,000, not boring at all. <laughs> and here's the winner. Where's the winner? Where's our winner? On the other side, right at the other side, is this. <laughs> that is our winner, right? Now, of course, this is also available in our collaborative graph here. It's also on Andrew's machine. And what I can do now is I can say, hang on a bit, that scanner that I have, I can live scan this now, right? Because I have that thing, I have that in-map thing. So I can live scan it, and it will then only look at the ports that are populated in here. So I'm gonna do it on this little piggy, and I'm gonna go up one, which gives me these two. I'm gonna say, okay, now just in-map this. And don't in-map all ports, just in-map port 22. There you go. Da 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 da. Right? Now keep in mind, up to this point, or to the previous point, we didn't touch their network, right? And I can do something else. I can say, well, take this to a banner, right? And then through the help of two students in South Africa that used to work for NWR, Harry said I could abuse them, so I abused them, right? I said, build me this thing that actually look in the CVE database and look at things like prior and after and things like this and look at all of this and f I feed you a banner and when I feed you a banner, give me vulnerabilities. So this is a thing called, they call it Volnhu or something. Yeah. I'll go to the slides now and we can run that and that will say, hmm, there is some issues and he has four pixels that you cannot probably read that says this is a candidate for server in Cisco devices. So this is where I want to look at, right? You get the idea of what we've done here. That boils all the way down to this, right? So just to go to the slides quickly, because I know he's on my case. We've done this, we've done this. Harriet interns, I abuse them. Kyle, Riley, and Mac, Matt Marks, this is a shout out to you. Um, and they have lots of energy because they're students, so you give them tough assignments. They build this thing called Volnhu. Right, and they even have a little homepage if you want to go there, volnhu.blogspot.com. Right, it's nice because we can get banners and process banners from anywhere. We can get it from Shodan, right, and process it. We can get it from Nmap, we can process it. We can get it from uh, the AWS stuff and we can process it from there. And that makes it pretty cool. Right, this is now the time I'm going to hand over. How are we looking for time? Oh, we're doing good. I'll say, why doing? don't you uh, look at some of those? I'm trying to find the one that uh, oh. I know is in the list. Okay, so we're good for time, so we can play. Yeah, That's no. awesome. Right, so let's just see. Which was this one? Was it? Uh, one? It's one of the ones that has webmen on it. Oh, the 10,000 ones? Yeah, they also have 450. Okay, so since we're coming off Black Hat uh, IPs, you know. <laughs> is it this one? Um, I think it's Actually, one. dude, you on the graph, so why don't you just mark it for me? Yeah, I'm just not sure which one it uh, has the, the way it displays the logo. Um, so look quick. Okay. Uh, um. So we're looking at these, these couple, right? How many are there? These, these four. Okay. So I can show it to him. These four. Andrew, which one? <coughs> I'm having a look. I'm having a look. Okay, um, but remember, you've got to go to 443 on those, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I found it. So I'm going to bookmark the node that I think is interesting because I just looked at it on my machine. And okay. I'm going to send it across. Send it. This one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So double click. Okay. This browser, browser thing. HTTPS. Just to tell you that we're not, not bullshitting you. Add yeah. exception. Confirm. That is the TSA. Oh, you can't, you can't see the logo on the. Oh, so I can't see it because I don't allow something like I don't know. 
No, on the projector, Flash. you can see the logo on the side. Oh, hang on, I can move it. So that's, yeah, that's uh, just one of the boxes that we found doing this. Yeah, well, we just found it now, right? We didn't look at it before. Yeah, no, that would be wow. unethical. Uh, so we didn't do that either. No, this demo just worked, <laughs> right? Okay, so, um, right, so I'm going to hand over to, to Andrew. He's going to show you some, some awesome other stuff that I, that I think is almost the highlight of this talk. Okay, thanks for that intro. Um, so you would have seen, oh, my mic is very loud. Uh, so I just want to go back to my girl. So we've seen when Rilof left off, uh, he did a lot of stuff uh, with OWA and he was brute forcing and he can brute force and VPNs and all sorts of things. Uh, but actually he was doing it on mining email addresses, right? And he was attacking essentially a person at that stage uh, because he was using an email address and he was going after a person. Um, and if you look at any of the, if you look at any of the big breaches um, and actually if you speak to any pen testers, um, you'll hear them say, okay, well, if they're stuck in a pen test or something, then basically they just send email to everyone, right? And people will click on things and they'll open attachments and they get all excited because their Excel document can play worms. Um, and generally that voids, you know, the privacy most of the time. So what we want to do is we want to try and kind of automate this stuff because Multigo already does quite a lot of data mining um, and stuff that we can do on individuals. And now we want to automate this to help with that phishing attack. Um, so the plan with it is that We'll mine for email addresses from a target domain. Uh, otherwise, you can get them from your address book. So you've compromised the machine or you've already got access to someone's OWA. You've got cred somewhere. Uh, you'll pull all their address book in. Um, and then you can put it into your graph. OK, so now your graph has got a whole bunch of email addresses in. And then you can do things like, OK, let me map these to social networks. So let me look it up on Facebook. Let me look it up on Twitter, LinkedIn, all that sort of stuff. Um, and of course, you can add that information manually in the tool, right? So I can say, okay, well, I already know this person is, I don't know, on some sort of V contact, so I'm going to throw that information in there. Um, and then we want to say, okay, well, now we've got this context on an individual. Now I want to do an automated attack against it. Uh, so that's with a web application that I call Kingfisher, um, and we'll, we'll show that now. Okay, so the first step is uh, I want to get uh, information, so I'm just going to get out of collaborative view. I don't want to share everything with Rulof. Cease, man. Um, okay, so if I take an organization, um, so this is also live, so I really hope all these work. Uh, in this case, I'm going to take something like um, UBM. All right, so they run Black Hat. I've decided that I missed a whole bunch of the talks because we had to prep. Um, I mean, go over slides. Um, so I want to find all email addresses for people who are at this domain. Right, so it's going to try three different ways. It's going to look at uh, who is information, PGP, and just use a search engine. So I'll just pull a whole bunch of email addresses down. And then what I could do is I could take all of these email addresses uh, to social networks. So I know a couple of people uh, from looking at it before that are already on social networks. I'm going to take, uh, I think someone, Jennifer, there's two. I'm sorry if there is anyone from UBM in the crowd. Like I'm, I really didn't intentionally pick you. It's just random. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to run these transforms and I'm going to take these two, hopefully this works, to uh, a Facebook account. Okay, and then I'm going to have a look at some others. So, uh, okay, so one of them resolves. So if I look at this email address, at some stage on Facebook, uh, someone called Jennifer Lee, who obviously works at UBM, uh, registered her account. So now I have a little bit of context on that individual, right? I can go look there and look at interest and likes and things like that. Um, I could also do something like if there's someone, I know there's a James. Okay, if I had to look at uh, the people who are in class, we'll know we did this quite a lot. If you look at the email address, most companies have a fixed format. So I don't need to tell you that this is going to be, this guy's going to be James Mir. You can see that just from the email address. So if I had to take a person in and change that to James Mir. Right, so this is info I'm just going to link in and say known as. Ooh. Oh, nice. Okay, now I've got this individual. I can then say something like, okay, let me look it up uh, on uh, Twitter. Ooh, that one. So what it's going to do is going to Google that, look on Twitter, um, and then return the responses. So actually all these transforms are written by uh, a company called Packet Ninjas. Uh, but you could, you know, however you wanted to get the information, we just prefer them. Dan. Oh, Dan, Dan's in the crowd. So he, he writes them, his company does it. Um, Okay, so I've got a bunch of different people who came up. Obviously, I can see, okay, that's probably not the right guy. Um, and I could have a look at these and say, okay, let me look at the profile and see who that is. 
So this is personal account, no idea. Um, so I'm going to delete that one, it's probably not him. All right, if I have a look at the second one, um, and essentially I'll start mining for all this information. Okay, don't like that one, that one's Palm Springs, Desert Sun, doesn't seem right. Take this one, and if I look at this one, uh, so this one says International Events Manager, right? UBM does events, so I figure that's probably the right guy that I'm looking for. Okay, so then I'd start doing that on uh, a whole bunch of them, um, and I'll build it up. I'll actually show you a, a graph that we worked on together. Um, but what essentially now I've, I've built context on these individuals. Okay, so the next step is that I can take this context, so I'm going to take a segment of these, and I can actually send it uh, to a specific web app that we've written called Kingfisher. Um, I'm just going to configure it here. What would you like it to be called? Ah, oh, Black Hat's fine. I'm going to send it to a URL. And now what it's going to do is this application is going to pass this, ty this type of data and I'm going to have some context on all the individuals that I'm going to start attacking. Okay, so I'm just going to cut back to the slides real quick. Uh, this one. Okay, so what the uh, application will do is then it's going to pass the information from the graph. Uh, it's going to have a look at what context you've given them. So I've already mined this information that goes, okay, I know this email address is on Facebook, so I'm probably going to use something like a Facebook template, right? I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to send a, you've been tagged in a photo. Or if it's something on Twitter, I'm going to say you've got a new follower. Okay, if I don't have anything, I could use something like a generic one, like something like your Outlook web access has been compromised, please log in here um, to fix it. Um, and you can do a whole bunch of stuff on that. So once the template uh, has been passed, so once the graph has been passed, it's got an email address, it knows that there's some sort of information on it, something like a, a Facebook account. And then what it can do is it can say, okay, since I know there's a Facebook account, I can also go and look up friends. So there's kind of like a free lookup to find friends of individuals. So that when I send someone an email, it has context, right? So I send you an email and I don't say, hey, you've been tagged in a photo by Andrew McPherson because you don't know me, but you've been tagged in a photo by one of your friends. Uh, so if you just look here in the application, so I can pick some of these, it's whoever this is. You'll see I've got some available templates. So for this one, I don't actually know that they, you know, I don't have a, a Twitter or a Facebook or anything else. So there's an OWA template uh, that basically is just an Outlook web app. It says that's going to be replaced, uh, unauthorized access, we recommend whatever, click on this giant link, uh, and all the world will be saved, and you'll get lots of free cats. Um, free cats? Free really, cats. Andrew? <laughs> Okay, so when you're looking at the templates, essentially we've created three different types. Uh, so I'm just going to change it here before we show the better ones. Uh, so you've got three types of templates, right? One is a clean redirect. So we'll change the link in the template to be anywhere that you want them to go. You click on that, sends them off to wherever you've got your fancy O-Day and things like that. Uh, bounce redirect. What we'll do is you'll click on the link, you'll come to our server, we'll collect some info, and then we'll send them on. Okay, and then the last one, obviously the preferred one is a collect redirect or we'll serve them up some sort of fake login page. Uh, they'll put in credentials and then we'll, we'll have a look at that. Okay, so on this one, there's not really a lot to configure. I can say show rendered, and down here it's going to give me what the rendered things looks like at this terrible resolution. Um, so here you can see, okay, it's going to send it to her. There's a security notice with notice suspicious activity, and everything looks right. So if I pick one of the two individuals that we did earlier, um, it's Jen something, one of these. Right, and I click on it. You'll see that now I've got the ability to do a Facebook tagged picture template. Okay, so if I click on it, so the uh, unmodified template uh, is obviously going to get replaced by information that you add. So over here I can do things like, okay, this is the target profile that I'm going for, right? So we already found that her name was Jennifer Lee. And then I can change to say, okay, well, which friend of hers am I going to send the photo from, right? So I can send it from, I've pulled a friend list. I mean, obviously I don't know these people. Um, and then I can say down here, well, actually, once you've populated this template and going to send it, she's going to click on it, also serve up uh, a fake Facebook page. Okay, so when I show rendered, then it says it's going to look just like this, so the standard way that Facebook uh, templates look. And then at the bottom here, I can click Save. Okay, and now it's going to save that template uh, for this individual, and you'll see that her uh, name went green. So the same thing if I take, uh, I think it's James that I did, yeah, if I take James's profile, You'll see here that he's got a Twitter, the option to add the Twitter template, right? Because I've got that context on the individual and I can, I can then generate something targeted specifically for them. So the Twitter profile, I'll say, okay, it's, it's James. Uh, I, know, I know some context, he works at UBM. Um, and I need to put in someone that's obviously going to say, okay, well, you know, this person is now following them. So I might put in something like Black Hat Events. Right, and it says there's their pictures and things. When I show the rendered, 
then it looks just like the, the Twitter mail that you get, right? And you'll get sent that. Uh, it's got various things that you can click on. I can save this template, right? And then that one is also green. Okay, if I click send templates at the bottom here, I've still got time. You gotta rush it a bit, dude. No, I got this. If I click send templates at the, at the bottom, obviously that's gonna send templates, uh, send these emails actually to the people at UBM. Uh, so this is my first Black Hat talk, and I'd probably like to come back at some stage, so I'm not going to actually send emails to people. I'm going to send it, try. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but I'll show you an example on, on something else that, we, that we're going to do with that. Um, so just to go over the components quickly, the way that it works is your Multigo client, then uh, oh, I think we only take questions at the end, otherwise we'll never get through slides. So your Multigo client posts the graph to the application, application processes it, uh, gives you the option to send, uh, to configure the mail templates based on the context that you've got. Uh, it'll also allow you to set up the collectors and things uh, and communicate with the collector. It'll then, uh, after you've saved the templates, you click send, it'll then push the mail to uh, an SMTP sender that you can move around just so when you get RBL'd and things like that, uh, it'll be somewhere else. That will go to your target. So I get the mail saying, hey, you've got a new friend request. I click on it. It'll then come back to the collector. Collector will say, okay, great. I know that you wanted to serve up that fake Facebook page. Uh, and then they'll, you know, they'll put in their credentials and then we'll monitor it with Multigo that we do next. Uh, so when we started doing this, I was pretty sure that it, it wouldn't work and this whole phishing thing was rubbish. But uh, the first time I actually got it to send mail nicely to Riloff, he had no idea that it, that it came through. So, 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 so he's, he sent me an email, right? He, we speak on Skype and he goes, did you get my mail? Yeah. I was like, like, I don't get mail from you. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so just being able to monitor him, and uh, we attack, we attack, we try to on a few of our, our friends and people that we know. So wives, girlfriends. Yeah, <laughs> I'm oh. still gonna have to explain that one. Okay, so um, <laughs> some of the challenges that we had. So naturally, when you're sending email, uh, so I tried a, a bunch of other places that do these phishing things, and the biggest thing is actually that it gets into your spam folder, right? If it gets into your spam folder, you may as well not do it because. Uh, if your target doesn't see it, they're not going to click on it. It's not really that useful. Uh, so there were a couple of challenges in getting past that. And essentially all the providers are doing three different things. Uh, so when a mail comes in, they look at who it's from. They look at the domain. They'll look for things like SPA or DKIM, make sure it's signed. Uh, if yours isn't, they'll just drop it or put it into spam. Uh, then they'll look at the actual content. So they'll see if you've used the same DOM and the same uh, pictures, things like that. If it looks too similar, it's dropped and then there's a number of uh, particular phrases. So if you ever use Facebook's uh, full address of the campus, your mail goes into spam, irrespective of where you send it from. Uh, At least so you send it from Facebook. Yeah, okay, but I can't send it from Facebook, so I think that's the, the idea. And then the other one was Outlook was, uh, Outlook was really difficult. Uh, if you send any link in Outlook that has an IP address in, it is marked as spam. You can send it with 127001, marked as spam. Oh, so it's marked as a phishing? Uh, marked as phishing, yeah, yeah, phishing spam. Okay, and then the other thing was obviously being blocked. So you've got to have an, uh, the way to move your mailer around so that you're not getting uh, blocked in, uh, with something like that. Okay, so I'm going to send, uh, I'm going to do an example just on me. Hopefully this works as well. Okay, so the idea is you drag a domain in. I'm going to take something that I know, well, it's mine. Um, and I'm going to mine for email addresses. Okay, so the same way I did before. Obviously, it's a much smaller domain. It's only a couple. I might limit out a couple of email addresses. So, okay, well, these uh, I don't need anymore. Or they're admin accounts, things like that. Someone I'm not interested in. Could do something like, okay, let me look uh, this up on something like Facebook. Okay, and it comes back. I look at this email address. I go, okay, Andrew Mork, I've seen that before. It's a guy who talks a lot of rubbish on the internet. Uh, so I've seen he has an alias of Andrew Mohawk. Okay, so I'll just attach that there, so some extra info I've got. And then I could do something like look that up on Twitter on my tiny resolution. Okay, and then that will then have a Twitter account. So now I've got some context on the individuals that I'm going to be targeting. Okay, in this case they're both me. Uh, but obviously I want to come back, so we're not going to target UBM. Uh, okay, so then now what I want to do is send it to the application, right? You'll see there's quite a lot of transforms that can run. Uh, this is the one that I'm interested in. Okay, go back to my browser. And now I see there's only the two, right? So if I take something like the Gmail account first, okay, I can use the OWA template, uh, template eBay account susp suspension, or the Twitter new follower. So that's the one I'm going to pick. Um, who am I going to send it from? 
So I'm going to say I'd like IBM to follow me today. Um, and as soon as my browser responds, there we go. I get the IBM account details. I say show rendered. I see what it looks like. I go, okay, that looks like a pretty legitimate mail to me. I'm going to save it. Okay, then I'm going to go to the next profile. In this case, I'm going to try something like the Facebook tagged photo. Okay, here's my profile. I'm going to go through my friends. So maybe I pick someone like Conan. There's, he likes motorbikes, so there's a photo of him being ridiculous. Dude, you mumble. Okay, uh, I can click on show rendered. Now I've got um, now I've got what the email looks like. Again, save it. Go to the top. Now they're both green, and now I'm actually going to send them. Okay, so I send my mails, and there they've both been sent. And now if I go to the inboxes, I have new mail from Facebook, so it didn't get into my spam folder. And hopefully this one didn't get into my spam folder, and it didn't. I've got a new follow on Twitter. Would you believe? <laughs> uh, so I'm doing quite well over here. Okay, so then uh, what do you do? Ooh, that's not the right one. Where is it? Where's our slideshow? Zzz. I don't know where it disappeared to. It's because we have a two by two screen. Yeah. Ah, yeah. okay, so I got it back anyway. Uh, so obviously you wait for the user to click on it, and then you serve them O-Day, compromise the machine, and you've won. Right, that's like the best, the best rule that you can but have. We said no OD. Yeah, but obviously we said, okay, well, we're looking to target an organization and we're not going to use any OD, uh, nothing like that. So we can do a bunch of things. Okay, for starters, we just collect the IP address and user agent. So that gives us a lot of info uh, just so I know where they're coming from. And if I want to target them again, be like, oh, your Firefox is out of date. You need to update it here. Um, I redirect the user to a fake um, account. So then they log in. I'm looking for credential reuse, the kind of common things that you see, uh, and especially in the big breaches as well. Um, and then you hope that those are applicable and they're VPN and webmail and things like that. Uh, so if there's someone in my family who uses the same password for everything they can find, uh, then obviously that's a, a good target. Okay, so we have a couple of templates. So the Twitter and Facebook ones I showed you. We've got an Outlook web access. So it's just a form that you put in your details. And then we've got a really nice one. That's one of my favorites. It's the OWA uh, NTLM or generic basic auth one. Uh, so what that does is it basically serves up your prompt. Uh, that looks like basic auth, so it also looks the same on uh, NTLM. Uh, if you're coming from your domain, you pretty much can't tell the difference in the browser. We'll keep popping it up three times. Uh, once users put the details in three times, we'll redirect them to wherever you need to go, so like your internal account. Um, and then we'll collect those credentials. Okay, so this is a really nice uh, attack if you're just doing phishing. But of course, uh, you know, we work for Perturba and uh, you know, everything that we see, we think that can be visualized in Multigo, and we'd like it that way. Okay, so we've got a number of options uh, that, of things that we can run uh, in Multigo. So here's, uh, I'm going to start a new graph, and you'll see I've got a couple of Kingfisher entities. Well, they, well, they can't, they can't see, see it, see. though. Well, I do have some Kingfisher entities, take my word for it. Okay, I'm going to drag it in, and I'm going to put in the server that I've configured that we used. So it was with black hat dash inet. Ruloff bought me a very nice domain. Is it D E A M A D M? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me just see. Yeah. Okay, that's my domain. Then I can say, okay, look at campaigns that have been run. Um, and you'll see that there's a number of them. So there's uh, two sets of them that I've actually tested already. Um, and then I can say, okay, I can look at things like, okay, uh, let me see the email addresses that they were sent to. Okay, so these will be, uh, then I can do, okay, from the email addresses, uh, show me, let me just move this up here so I can get to the transforms. Show me the details of those attacks. So I can see IP addresses and I can see credentials and I can see um, uh, different uh, user agents that have been used. So now I can start doing that in Multigo, but it's a bit of a pain to run. So what I can do here, we've got a machine that'll just continually monitor this. Right, so this is going to keep going and it's going to keep doing that uh, and look for these kind of details. And now when I go into my browsers, so Here's my Facebook one. So I've got a new mail. You'll see it's from Facebook. It clearly is. Um, and the only thing is I have to display images, right? I turn them off for everything anyway. But if I display images, there's Conan and his silly motorcycle. Um, and I can see, oh, there's a photo. I click on it. And now I'm served up with my Facebook login page, uh, which looks legitimate. So I'll be like, legit Facebook user. And if you can hear, Multigo just came back in the background saying, OK, well, someone has clicked on my new campaign. And I've got the IP address and the, and the user agent. And there's my password. I'll log in. Hopefully that thing won't get in the way. 
Okay? And then I'm logged into Facebook, right? Because it just redirected me and I already had a session open. So uh, it was a long explanation with my girlfriend about why that happened uh, and it wasn't a real site. Um, and then when this machine runs now, so I'm just going to let it collect those details. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're running out of time here. You'll see that there it says legit Facebook user and password. So I didn't have to do anything. I can just keep this up on my wall and wait for my targets to, to come in and, and click on it. Uh, Okay, so we had a couple of cool ideas. I'm going to do really quickly here because I see we, uh, we're running out of time. Okay, so uh, two years ago we lifted a talk called Am I the President where we're profiling someone like a really high target thing like the President um, and you have a lot of context on him. So you know he probably comes from a Mac, probably has a really, really new user agent. No one gives the President an old copy of OS X. Um, you know the IP ranges that he's coming from uh, and you know the time of day. He's probably not going to check into a website at 3 a.m. It's probably going to be during business hours. So what you can do then on the templates is that you filter for them, right? So you say, okay, only when my target is from these IP addresses with this user agent at the right time of day, am I serving up my O day? Otherwise, I'm serving the site is under construction. Okay, so then every time the Google bots or anyone else, your antivirus vendors come to it, they're only going to get you know that hello world one, uh, and then also dynamically changing it. Uh, okay, so Rilof's going to do the intro to this. So thanks, dude. You give me four minutes for this. Easy, easy, guys. Um, I'll fight him to, so that we stay on stage. No, you know. So, so eleven years ago, I was uh, on this very stage. I think it was this stage. I remember this stage um, with uh, a good friend Arun Mir. He's uh, he's now uh, back in South Africa running things. And we talked about uh, Satiri. The, I think the title was Satiri Advances in Trojan Technology. Um, it was cool then, it's kind of cool still now. Um, and nowadays it's pretty standard in every kind of malware that you see. Basically what it is is you know, we hop on top of IE, we tunnel our stuff over um, HTTP but within an IE instance. Um, and so we decided we're going to rebuild it um, because everybody needs a Trojan, right? Um, and it kind of still works, it still works fine. Um, and the question was, can we use Multigo to herd this Trojan, right? Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you quickly. In fact, I think we're not going to show you quickly because we are running out of time. We're not going to show you no, how we can. Gone. No, we're not okay. going to do this. Um, we can't do this. We've got is exactly a minute okay. and a half to wrap up the entire talk. So I'm not going to show you this, but trust me, you can herd bots with Multigo as well. So look at you know correlation between time zone, networks, from internal um, and so forth, domains and so forth and so on. The last thing I want to talk about quickly is mobile devices. Um, mobile devices is really just another computer, but it's a little bit more interesting than a, a normal computer because you've got more things to play with like SMSs, call logs, accounts and so forth and so on. Um, and so once we start building a thing that can herd mobile devices within Multigo, um, it, it, mobile devices is really like the PC of the 90s. It's a personal computer. It's a lot more personal than your computer, if you would agree with me. There's more personal stuff on your phone than on your computer probably. Um, so when we start correlating between who phoned who and say this person is in the same address book of these three users, then things start to become interesting. We started building this with um, MWR's Joseph framework. Um, we got kind of far, but we semi ran out of time. But the MWR guys are here. They're sitting over there. It's those two guys, those South African guys. No, Silla, no. No, Silla, no. They're going to be at the arsenal, so check that out. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Um, uh, and we basically build it on top of the Joseph framework, which we're not going to show. Uh, we actually have a lot of those. Uh, we built a bunch of modules that just do post uh, compromised of the devices so you can get the info in Multigo. So we'll release those as well. Right. So interesting, other interesting project. There's a lot of projects that are, um, that's happening in Multigo that's security related. Canary Framework, um, Choden, you would know about that. Uh, Cuckoo, CIF, Trend Micro build a whole lot of transforms that also runs within Multigo. So that's pretty cool. Um, release dates for this. At the moment, I believe the Kali Linux version is Dookie here. Is there he is. This is the first time I see the man face to face, right? Thank you, sir. I owe you a lot. We'll buy you also lots of beers. Okay, we'll get off stage just now. 
So it's live right now. The Kali Linux version is live right now. Also, Teeth, the stuff that I showed, the network stuff, is also going to be live. We'll tweet exactly how to get that, um, but it should be pretty straightforward. It is live in the Kali uh, repo right now. Um, we'll also put details on the website how to get uh, how to get tungsten and you know uh, it's probably right now if you download you'll download, yeah, yeah, tungsten, download tungsten right so it yeah. literally went live when we started so we don't really have time for questions I know it's coffee now so um, we can do one or two things we can either show you the the, the demo we can't right can, can we, we can we, can we go and coffee one demo. can we. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to go and have coffee, you're going to miss out on a lot. It's really cool. Um, the conclusion, I'll put the conclusion on and the next slide, which we had to do. You see me edit this thing, which is at the side there are evaluation thingies. You need to thingy your, that, I don't know what that is. Scan your tag. Scan your right? tag at the, at the, scan your tag at that machine, right? Um, and the conclusion is for the people that want to have coffee is that we, can le uh, really leverage Multigo to put a lot of little modules in that covers a big spectrum of attack tools, be that network level, be that infrastructure, web application, social engineering, botnet, uh, mobile application, and we can basically build all of this on top of this framework that we have that is really nice for sharing information, for visualizing patterns, and with Tungsten is now uh, gives you the ability to basically share information in real time with other people. All of the features that you see um, is in the community edition, which is free, which is the Kali version, or you can download from our website. We are also releasing um, the, the teeth stuff today, and the Kingfisher application is also going to be released uh, for free, no charge. It's, oh, we're going to put it on the website so you, you can play with it. You got a little kind of like do read the read me and kind of see how it sits together. Yeah? Uh, it's, it's here because slash black at USA. On our website? Yeah. Uh, let's see, see if it is live. Oh, black at, no. Black at but, USA. But uh, dot com slash? Black at, capital B. Yeah. USA, all caps, 2013. USA, 2013, like so? A slash, yeah. So like so? Yeah, without the capital H. Oh, like so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there you go. There's the Kingfisher source, the Mercury Drozer stuff that we built, and um, the the teeth project. They they can get it right now. What did they do? Like apps get installed, Multigo dash teeth. Pretty much app get installed, Multigo dash teeth. I think it's capital T, capital M, capital T. Oh, just all lowercase. Okay, that's how you get it right now in Cali. Um, if you want to, you can go have coffee or you're going to miss out on a lot. <laughs> Not five minutes? Five, yeah, it's going to take five minutes, right? Yeah. Is it fine? Okay, let's, let's roll. Okay, 21 and 9. Okay. Uh, so we'll have put, built this, uh, or essentially it's his, it's his baby, built Satiri, and then uh, rebuilt it as 21 and 9. So I'm just going to fire one up here. Um, Okay, so ours is called Perturva Trojan because every company needs a Trojan, as Rilof described, and we and have our own one. And so of course, we don't do we don't cover delivery of this, right? You can de de deliver this, you, can you know, however you want to. Huh? You can get your own Trojan, really. Everyone should have one. Yep, you can do it with O'Day or whatever. That's not the point. Okay, but we basically have an interface that we can monitor these things and send it commands and things like that. So. Okay. Oh, sorry. So okay. I've got uh, a server that's the, essentially the control server, even though the bots are, are connecting up. Um, and I can get, say, for example, the bots that are currently active on it. Uh, so there you'll see two of my PCs back in South Africa, and this one on stage is here. And if Rudolph fires up one, it'll come in just now as well. Um, and I can do things like execute a command. I can execute a raw command, or I can get things like system information. Um, and I can do a whole bunch of things that will that will then be processed on these bots so that I can look at collaboration, uh, or I can look at correlation between them. Right, so I'm looking at things like, uh, let me just, uh, they don't have any commands at the moment, but let me execute something like uh, get system information. Okay, then the bots, I can then query that, uh, do the bots have that command? So if I go get commands, then it'll all come out so that each bot has the command, you see it's marked in blue, so they're not actually processed yet. 
Okay, so now I'm going to start that machine, which essentially just scripts all the different ways you can deal with it. Okay, there you can hear it starting. And now it's, uh, it's waiting for these bots. So there you see one has come back. All right, it's processed it. It says there's a user Andrew, it's Windows 8 Pro, and my time zone is set to Harari Pretoria. I can also see the output of that command. Um, so if I need to look, there's all the hot fixes and things that are on the PC. So now I can start uh, correlating all of this data. Okay, so these bots are actually on a, um, are, are backing off, so they don't check in, you know, at a very regular interval at the moment. Um, so they'll come in a little bit later. Uh, but this one is obviously still current. I just fired it up. So I can do other things like I can say, okay, let me get uh, networking information. I so can, I can fire one up. You okay, know. yeah, fire one up. The yeah, machine is running, so it should just come in on its own. Um, see, I'm getting networking information, so there's the command being sent out. When it goes green, the bot has processed it, um, and then I can see that information as it comes out. I'm just going to wait for Relof's machine to come in here. Uh, but here I can see all the networking information. So obviously as soon as these things start linking up, I can identify bots that are A, on the same network, um, that have the same you know, sort of network ranges, so if they've got the same internal ranges. Um, also I can run specific commands on them, so I can say, okay, well for all bots, so here's Ruloff's bot, you see that I had commands listed for it. Sorry, there's a, a bit of a thing with screenshots that you need to log into them. Okay, I can also obviously take screenshots and I can look for different correlations. So here you see between these two bots, so this one here called Stratos and this one here on Herbert 9, so these are two machines on stage, you'll see that they're both in the same time zone. Right, so now I can start managing a much larger botnet and say, okay, I'm only interested in machines that are this operating system in this time zone um, and then I can get them to run a specific command. So if I wanted to, um, let's say on the one that's on stage here. Take a screenshot here, hang on, I'll put something on here. Okay, I can take, so there's actually already okay. a screenshot that Just happened on his prior, there you can see Multigo running, um, oh. but I'll, I'll take one current. Okay, well we've got to prove to them that it's live, so what text do you want me to put in a notepad here, really big? Okay, I want to take Anything. Two. Huh? Knell poof, okay, knell, now we're doing knell poof. Okay, so I'm putting this right okay, there. Okay, so I'm going to tell each bot to now, uh, you'll see there's a whole bunch of things I can do, but take a screenshot. Okay, so both of these are going to take screenshots. This one is obviously going to have a screenshot of my PC. And as soon as it picks up that command, has it processed, it'll come back uh, into the graph. So there I see the command is out. Now I'll just wait for it to, to finish processing, upload its image back to our server, and then we'll put it down in the client. Uh, so there I see it's finished processing. So I can go and look at the image. Um, so here you see this is uh, Rilof's machine. Okay, and there you can see he's typed it in, so that's just a small icon. Uh, I can actually view the full image. I think it's gonna... Uh, should really make sure the passwords. But there you go, there's Rilof's screen. Uh, so you can see that I can execute that on, on everyone's computer. So I can start hurting the bots, uh, and of course executing commands and things like that. So I could also make uh, just the last one, I can make each of these machines uh, execute a command or not? Uh, yeah, you can. Let's, uh, let's pop uh, calc. Okay, so every, everyone always likes uh, popping calc. So I'm just going to execute a raw command. Uh, C drive, uh, Windows, System32, calc.exe. Pretty sure that's where it lives. I'm sure there's a pen tester who told me if it's wrong, I hope. Okay, so it's going to ask both of those bots to execute that. Um, and you'll see they'll come in as blue, so it's a blue command. Uh, so tell me when it's on your screen and then I'll have a look at it here. There you go. Okay, so, so Rulof's got it on his screen, there's the calc that's I know you can't there. see it, but... Uh, okay, well if I, if I scroll down I'm sure it's, uh, it's still waiting on mine. It's probably going to execute on yours now as well, right? Yeah, I think I ran it on mine as well. Uh, but the idea is that I can then manage, I don't know where it's going to be on this race. But the idea is then that I can manage multiple bots uh, over the network, so it's not just uh, using Multigo for uh, finding information, you can also use it to bridge all your tools. Okay. Guys, thanks a lot. Thanks for your time. Thanks, guys.